Psalm 56, 8 to 9. You have kept count of my tossings. You have put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? I love this because this is beautiful. The New King James Version says you have kept count of my wanderings, but the word relates more to tossings in mental restlessness. Okay? The Lord isn't too concerned, like if you like wander off down the streets where you didn't know where you was. This is to do with mental restlessness, okay? That's why the ESV says you have kept count of my tossings. How many times have we been tossing to and fro, sweating in your bed, just like, God, what is this going on? You're trying to get through it. You're, re you're really in a wrestling match. Well, the Bible says God has kept account of that, all right? He's kept account of that and he's put our tears in a bottle. There's a divine database that stores all our suffering. Like, I love that. I really love that. Not because I'm dead morbid and gothic, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but that God really does take into account and he collects our sufferings. There's nothing else in the Bible that God collects. He collects our tears. I think that's amazing. I think that's just beautiful. This entire verse shows me God's heart and how our sufferings are not in vain. They are kept account of in a divine database. They are not forgotten, but rather they are stored up. That tells me our sufferings mean something to him. Now think about what people collect. I've got a few original Star Wars figures there upstairs. Might be worth a few bob in the day. You know, some people collect vintage cars. People collect things, don't they? And what is a collectible? A collectible is something of originality with rare value, all right? something that's rare and scarce. So if God collects our tears and he collects our suffering, these things have value to him. Well, the Bible tells us that all these things are super precious to God and he loves us so much. And you know, my mum used to say to me when I was young, I love you so much it hurts. And I used to be like, how does that even make sense? Mm -hmm. And now I've got a little boy, I love him so much it hurts. And I know what that feels like. And I know, you can never know that until you have a kid, until you're a parent. Because it can't compute with you until like that area of your heart is like unlocked and you like really know what it means. And I, and I never used to get what it means to love so much that it hurts. But I do, I love my boy so much that it hurts. And I'm a father and he's my son. So that relationship between God and his children, that's how he feels, you know. And this wrestling match that he has, it's not like... God was coming to smash his head in. It's like when I pick up Jonah, now he's learned how to do the chop. So he chops me face and I go, oh, da, da, oh, 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 and he's like laughing his head off. And I think he thinks he's strong. He's like slapping me and I'm like, oh, rolling over. And he's like laughing his head off. And then I pick him up and I could easily harm him, but I don't. I keep him in a position and, 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 and I let him think he's winning a bit, you know what I mean? And that's how I see Jacob and, 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 and the father. It's like he touched him and dislocated his hip. I mean, flipping neck, that's why I gotta be careful throwing Jonah in the air, you know what I mean? But it was never an intent to cause ill harm. It was to build his confidence, it was to build his esteem, it was to train his heart, it was to prepare him for meeting his brother, it was to it was to grant him a blessing in a supernatural way. You know, diamonds are formed under the most pressure. That's right, isn't it? The, purif the purification of gold is at the highest temperature. So a man is refined under awesome trials. This is how we are made in perfection. And this is what our Father is going to do to us. But yeah, God collects the tears. He collects our sufferings. And I love that because I can actually probably remember, like, not when he's crying because he's like, once his dummy. But like when a child really cries and the tears roll off their face like boulders, you can remember it. It's like, whoa, it's so, it's so like, it's, it's deep. It can cut you to your heart, you know. And this is what the Lord does. It says, you have put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? God remembers. God does not forget. And he puts our tears in a bottle like a costly wine or an expensive perfume. There is nothing else God collects other than our tears. So please remember, as they roll off our face, they're not forgotten. They actually evaporate 
and these these tears when they evaporate our father is actually keeping an account of them and collecting them your tears never go in vain but i want to show something amazing now i'm going to show you something quite amazing to do with our tears because every teardrop that protrudes out of our body is actually a unique distinctive special form of artwork consider this above here you're actually looking at microscopic images of tears these are single teardrops and every tear that we produce is shaped differently it's unique it's got its own character it has different composition and different viscosity and all tears contain a chemical biological makeup of oils antibodies enzymes that are suspended in salt water jesus says ye are the salt of the earth you get me and the salt preserves okay and they leave a mark believe it or not they, they like they almost can stain on a molecular level because of the suspension of salt as they crystallize so they do have a memory about them as well which is quite incredible i'm not going to go too much into it but there was a photographer who done an experiment her name was rose lynn fisher she collected a hundred tear samples are you on to rose lynn fisher all right well you get on to this then and they were all taken at different circumstances all right and she analyzed them these tears under a microscope and what she discovered was each tear portrayed a dynamic artscape each tear has its own distinct expression pattern and sometimes symmetrical variable so check this out this is incredible this above you can see these different tears that were collected at different intervals during trauma or happiness or change and when they were when she looked at them under a microscope they created these wonderful patterns these 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 landscapes if you will and she thought well maybe maybe this is just a coincidence so she 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 drew tears from an onion and the body actually produces hormones to defend itself and you can see these like symmetrical patterns and they're quite incredible here we've got onion tears tears of grief tears of remembrance tears of change and this experiment proved how each emotion triggered a different chemical and hormonal response in the body so again tears of grief certain levels of hormones would be released tears of change or remembrance serotonin or dopamines would be released on a microscopic level and they would come out of the, the body like that this is an expression of what's going on inside isn't that quite incredible remember like when 90 percent water if you will uh, you can see tears of happiness to me that looks like a root or a tree it looks like flower doesn't it like our flower blossoms yeah an almond branch beautiful tears of release I, I, for me this looked like like wings of a bird like flying off it's quite incredible but you know as we've learned about as it is in heaven so it is on the earth and everything on a microscopic level actually resembles that so like just as we have fingerprints on our finger and we can see tree roots it's going on all around us it's the divine architect in it it's all related and she stated that each drop and this is a quote was a microcosm of the collective human experience almost like a data bank like you could actually sense what was going on in people's lives due to the chemical makeup of the tears that were released i'm seeing this and i know what the bible says about god collecting it and i'm like no wonder my god's collecting our tears this just confirms the bible it's incredible that our tears create these amazing patterns no wonder he collects them they're an art form to him they're beautiful to him he doesn't collect nothing else you know we could be connecting like cabernet sauvignon or vintage cars you know or gold he doesn't want it he's after these things okay the lord is most concerned what does the scripture say with them of a broken heart and a contrite spirit that's what he's after go ahead bex like even in like the secular like psychology and stuff they do say that it's always some kind of it's, it's good to cry like it, it lets you come to terms with your emotions and it's like coping with your emotions but in the world it's like don't cry yeah. don't cry that's right that's right so uh, when we cry our tears are like a saline lubricant that is actually for cleansing and it is a form of release because it pushes hormones out the body this is how we deal with grief so god is most concerned about this he's made us with in our eye ducts with two small holes it's a phenomenon 
and, and we're cleansing our body, it's almost like our eyes go through a baptism. We, we, it's like we baptise our eyes and we cleanse our eyes and we're able to be rejuvenated. It's quite incredible that God has built us like this, do you know what I mean? So each tear is like a baptism of the eye. It's restorative. It's, it's a process. That's all you want. It's a fantastic. Insight. And it's one that God documents. Psalm 56, 8 and 9, you have put my tears in your bottle. This is incredible. Now I know why. It matters to him, all right? Are they not in your book? Praise your heart. They are in his book. They're a database for him and our form. Quite incredible. Crying is how our body speaks when we cannot explain it with our mouths. And this is what our father is after the most. He's after what's going on inside. Okay, he's after what's going on inside. The fact that God remembers us in our suffering should be comforting to us all. Our tears are not futile. God knows each of his children so, so intimately. And every tear that we shed actually has meaning to him. Every tear is a collectible that he desires to keep. And in the end, he will share this joy with us when he says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. They shall be no more death no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that a great resolve, brothers and sisters? Isn't that a great resolve?